Welcome, and if you're watching this video, you're probably looking for something to use in the March IC, which is about a week away as of recording this. And uh, it's a Dialga team, as you've seen from the title, as you've seen from the thumbnail, and it is as good as I'm hyping it up to be. Uh, this is the Dialga team that I used in the February IC. I'll put my, uh, my final standing on the screen now. I think it's, I finished 465. Uh, I only played 30 games, so I still had 15 left over. Um, I, I just kind of had enough at that point, so I stopped playing there. So it could have improved further. Could have lost all 15 games and got, got a lower rank, but uh, um, yeah, could have improved more. And I, I feel like I probably could have got higher as well uh, quite easily had I, uh, had I played them. So quick disclaimer, the main strategy of this team is a bit best of one. Um, but no apologies. <laughs> no apologies there. When it comes to the ISC, the, uh, the international challenges have three types of player. The first one turns up with their team and they just want a shiny bird. It's their in-game team. They don't care. You're going to beat those, of course. Uh, the second player is one who takes the game very seriously and plays like it's best of three. And I very much fall into that category. Um, but it's not best of three, it's best of one. And that brings me to the third type of player. The third type of player is the type of player who will run things like uh, trick, eject button, who will run ally switch, who will just do whatever they can to just win the best of one game. And as annoying as that is, that is online battles in Pokemon. It's not an IRL tournament where it is best of three, it's best of one and we're going to play to best of one. And that's what we've got here. So this is the team. Um, you can see we've got the, the team of six here. It's not perfect that improvements can be made and uh, you may want to improve upon it yourself but I'll run through the strategy um, basically this week what I'm going to do is upload videos I'm going to have pre-recorded battles and talk through them so you can see how to play and I'm also going to record some new games with the team as well so again you can see how it works in real time so without further ado here is the team we've got Dialga is our uh, restricted alongside Groudon as well. You can see how Dialga is weakness policy and that Groudon is banded. And you can see the spreads on this team are all fairly straightforward, 252, 252, except for Latias. Latias actually, uh, I required something a, a bit more speci uh, specialized in that, in that regard. But we've got the Dialga and basically these are the four Pokemon that you wanna, that you wanna pick most of the time. The, the team, has Trick Room, but it doesn't look like a Trick Room team, so most opponents don't prepare for the, for the Trick Room uh, option. So what you do, basically, you lead Dialga, you go for the Trick Room, you lead Latias, and you ally switch turn one, because they want to blow up your Dialga more often than not. Um, when this works out, which is of course most of the time, you will end up with Trick Room up, Dialga not taking too much damage, Latias getting switched out because of the eject button, which allows us to get Incineroar in. And basically we've got Trick Room up, we're in a great position, we've got our threat on the field, we've got an, we've just intimidated our opponent as well. And from there, you will, well, th there are many things that you can do. Of course, if you look at the Incineroar, we've got Brick Break, which is an unconventional move, but we've got it to activate that weakness policy. So bring in the Incineroar, activate the weakness policy, and go from there with the Flash Cannon and the Roar of Time, and just obliterate the opposing team to the point where they can't recover. Um, the Brick Break is also really nice for when you're facing Grimmsnarl and they're setting up their screens, you can just get rid of them. So that's that, and then in the back, you've got the Groudon and Latias, which sometimes doesn't survive the the initial hit depending on what was what's hitting it but more often than not Latias will, will have survived but you'll growl in the back as well you can parting shot out from that point onwards get growled on in under trick room um, if trick room gets stalled out you would you would have done damage by that point but trick room ends then you've got Latias with tailwind support able to hit growl or Dalga in uh, uh, outspeeding the opponent outside of trick room as well the Dialga and the Groudon. The Groudon is slower, one point slower than Dialga. So the idea is basically you get around the redirection of things like in DD uh, when in Trick Room. So you can get off the spread move first, hopefully knock out the in DD, and then the max move's not going to be redirected. So that's that's what's happening there. That's the 
that's the strategy pretty much. That is the strategy. A lot of teams are not prepared for it. A lot of teams hyper offensive very fast. And you'll, yeah, you'll deal with them. You'll deal with them. In the final two slots, I've got Charizard and Venusaur. So the reason I've gone for these two is because opposing Groudon is a big problem and Charizard can just blow that up with Blast Burn. Uh, yeah, with, with the with the G Max Blast Burn, of course. Um, I don't bring these two Pokemon very often, but they're there, like I say, for a reason. I've gone with Flamethrower as well on this Charizard. Uh, a, a Solar Beam would be nice to help deal with Gastrodon, but I'm someone, I don't like to miss my moves and Blast Burn can miss when not Dynamaxed. Uh, so, your choice. And the Venusaur there mostly just for Sleep Powder spam, um, which is purely there just for certain matchups that it can be difficult to lead Latias or uh, that will get into if Trick Room's not a great option. So, things like Calyrex and Mimikyu, we don't want to go in Trick Room against, against those real dedicated Trick Room teams, especially Calyrex, we're a bit weak to Calyrex to be honest. So what we do is, that's when that's where we've got the Venusaur, we try to sleep out of the Mimikyu. <laughs> uh, it's Pokemon, you know, you can't cover for everything and uh, that sleep out gives us a 75% chance to slow the opponent down and uh, try to stop them imposing their strategy on us. So that's why those are there, They honestly they can be switched. Another weakness of the team is Amoongus. Like I say, most opponents don't bring Amoongus because they don't necessarily expect the Trick Room element looking at the team. And it is somewhat threatened by the Pokemon on the team as well. But Amoongus is sometimes on Trick Room teams as well, of course. And so if they do get their Trick Room up, Amoongus can be a problem. So things like Tabu Finny or Tabu Coco that accept terrain would be quite useful. Why haven't I got them on the team though? Um, again, these Pokemon are here for a reason. We become more growled on weak with Tabu Coco and Tapu Fini will weaken the Roar of Time. Um, of course, in and out of Dynamax. But workable, workable for sure. They could go on the team. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the strategy. That's overall strategy there. You don't really want to max Groudon because you've got the Choice Band on it. Um, why I've got the moves I've got on the Groudon just very quickly because they are they're a little bit strange. Uh, Precipice Blades because obviously. Uh, earthquake, so we can do things like Earthquake next to Latias and Charizard without worrying about missing, which is a big thing. Um, yeah, may, may seem strange, but you've got to remember, we're Choice Banded, so that Earthquake is stronger than a non-Choice Banded Precipice Blades, and you know how strong, strong that is already. We've got Stone Edge as a nuke option against the likes of... Uh, Eveltal, which can be a bit of a problem for the team, but if we're in the right position, we can try to nuke it with the Stone Edge. Same thing goes for Thunderous, uh, Zapdos, any, any flying types really. Um, and then the Rock Slide, which is purely there, just to, as a desperation move. <laughs> if we outspeed the opponent, we need to get flinches, that's what we're going to do. Or sometimes we need to hit an opponent, but Earthquake isn't an option, because we'll, we'll hit our partner, or maybe they're flying and that's our most accurate move outside of Earthquake, so sometimes we do that as well. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Um, I'll show you a battle now. We're gonna go up against Koga Zashian, which is a, an archetype that I've had a lot of success with, with this team. So uh, yeah, let's, let's have a watch. Okay, so here is my opponent, and uh, apologies to them, because yeah, we did cheese them quite hard here. But again, it's kind of what we've done on the team. So you can see, that this team is not prepared for Trick Room anyway. So their plan is straight away to try and blow up our Trick Room. So you see I locked in the Latias Dialga with the Incineroar and the Groudon. So those four, uh, yeah, immediately what, what we've gone for. It took me less than 30 seconds to decide that's what that, that was what we were going to do. Looking at this kind of team, you know, they've got the Grim Snarl there. Grim Snarl can be annoying with things like Thunder Wave and Switcheroo, those kinds of things. Basically, we try to out BS the BS when it comes to Switcheroo and, and Trick Whimsicott with the ally switch, because that will go first uh, against, against those things. Um, and of course, screen support as well. But as I said, we've got the Incineroar to, to uh, remove screens. So yeah, let's see how this one goes. So we see the Zapdos Zashin lead. 
And this is perfect, right? Because we've got Latias de Alga. So straight away I'm thinking, can I get away with an ally switch here? The answer is absolutely yes, I can. Because Dialga is only threatened by the Zacian. I don't think my opponent's going to attack into the Latias slot with Zacian. But they might. But they're certainly not going to close combat that slot. They might play rough it, which is a bit risky uh, from our end. But I'm actually okay with that. I'd, I'm happy to take the risk. Because if our opponent reads us, and or not even reads us, but they attack into that slot, well, that's on us at the end of the day. Um, yeah, it, it goes, it just goes that way sometimes, and that's one of the beauties of the team. Actually, it's, it's, you'll you'll win fairly quickly, or sometimes you just go, okay, well that didn't work out. We'll try again soon. So yeah, go for the ally switch and the trick room turn one. Let's see how this works out. There we go. Sacred sword into the Latias. So now I'm just thinking, I'm in an incredible spot. What is that base going to do? They're not dynamaxed either. Cinerol comes in. So heavily threatening the uh, Zacian as well. Thunderbolt comes out into into Incineroar. So yeah, they were doubling the uh, Dialg Dialg slot. Obviously, one one into stop the trick room. So we've got a, we've got a fully healthy Dialga in trick room. Weakness policy ready to get activated. So you can see straight away I'm. I go straight after the um, Zapdos because I'm expecting the, the Zacian to switch out and, or protect in the face of the Incineroar. So we don't need to fake out. We don't need to. We're going to go straight in. If they keep Zacian in, we're going to drop the attack even further as well with the, uh, with the Wormwind. But of course, got to expect them to switch out. So yeah, my opponent's taking their time here. But you can see that it's very much clockwork. So there's our Dynamax. And I'll be I'll be showcasing games where the LR switch does go wrong and how we can can uh, get out of that situation. It does happen sometimes. So here we go. So my opponent didn't didn't protect, they didn't switch. The Zacian, so yeah, interesting play, unexpected for sure. So we activate our weakness policy. And that's the end of that base. And you can see Sacred Sword comes out, but at this point, not too worried about that. So next up is the Kyogre. Now I've got a couple of options here. Of course, still still spike into the Zacian would work. I can't remember what I go for. I, I Wormwind, I guess. Uh, maybe we'll Wormwind the Kyogre then. Um, or not, I, I, I took a lot of time deliberating on this one. <laughs> okay, so I saw fit to make this play. Uh, yeah, you can see we could have done a few a few different things here. But this is the play we went for, we went for the parting shot. We could have easily switched things up, right? Could have gone for the um, the max move into Kyogre. So here I'm in a kind of an awkward spot. Cause like, well, I want to bring in Groudon, but also I don't want to bring in Groudon because I don't want it taking unnecessary damage. So I think I'd go for Latias here. And this is a situation you, you will find yourself in sometimes. Trick room and then like yes is the best thing to bring in. So I think I went for that play because I think because because Kyogre is so bulky that we wouldn't knock out if it Dynamax. So I was like, well, I'm not going to attack into that slot. We'll just go straight up the Zashian. And yeah, you can see. I mean, my my opponents played it risky. With their with their Zashin, not protecting either turn, um, but you can see we're firmly in control. Right? My opponent's having all sorts of trouble now. 
I do have to be wary of the size of the toad because it can be uh, can be a real problem. So we decide to attack into that slot, and I think we missed to call fire the Kyogre, yeah. Or do we? What am I doing? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, of course, many, many options here. I think Trick Room might be ending soon as well. So maybe that's why I've gone for the Protect Play. So they actually Dynamax here. And it is the Seismitoad, the Dynamax, I do believe. The, the, the Seismitoad is the bigger threat as well. So of course my opponent can always max guard here, but there's no way that I was going to not target that slot. Because we've got the Kyogre at minus one. And I'm confident that with Growl in the back, we can we can uh, do what we need to do against it. It's the seismic code that I'm more worried about. So they actually don't max guard. And that's the power of Dialga. That's why we are running Raw of Time, because it is just that strong. And, well, you can see we're going to win. It's as simple as that. We're just going to win. Uh, what else could they have led? Had they led the Seismitoad, they probably would have maxed and gone for the Max Quake. You ally switch, because Latias is immune to the uh, to the Max Quake there. Um, sometimes you end up in the awkward spot of Latias ends up surviving the turn with, with, without taking any damage. So it doesn't get switched out. But that's okay. That happens sometimes. You just reposition. So uh, we, we are not out of Trick Room yet. And then we finished the job with the Roar of Time. So there we go. We, we didn't even get out of Trick Room. We sat in Trick Room and we just we just went from there. We just went from there. Of course, you know, different games are, are different. Depends on the individual. Depends how you play. Depends on the team you go up against. Depends on the RNG as well. But games will go like this uh, with this team. So, yeah, that's our first episode in how to play this Dialga team. And uh, if you have any thoughts... On it, have any questions about it? If you think, oh, we could switch the Charizard out for for this or Venusaur for that, do let me know. Um, and you know, I I never <laughs> have asked people to subscribe before on my channel, but if you like this video, please do because I will be releasing uh, more videos by the day on this particular team. Uh, again, showcasing it in different situations, how we play it, how we get around certain things. But yeah. Thanks for watching.